Thanks for staying with India Today's coverage here on the Ukraine war. It's day four of the invasion. Citizens in Ukraine have picked up arms. We've just shown you a world-exclusive report from inside the Territorial Defense Unit where civilians, public relations professionals, lawyers, doctors, IT, software engineers are all lining up to pick up their weapons. And now a Ukrainian member of parliament who you saw first here on India Today yesterday is back with me. Uh, because, Kira, we clearly haven't had enough of you. We want to hear more from you because your image, your interview has gone hugely viral here, on India, here in India. And therefore, I want to speak to you personally about what the last one day has been like. Uh, Kira, to you first. Hello. Your image... Your image with the rifle has become a defining image of what's happening in Ukraine right now. What has happened over the last 24 hours since you put out that image, since you spoke to us? Have many more people come forward similarly? Of course. Okay. We are gathering the resistance troops and we are gathering the units who are armed and who are ready to resist Russian forces. Every evening we are getting ready so they will try to take Kiev. And every morning, when the sun rises, we say, well, Russians, you failed this time as well. So it's usually two or three uh, huge air force strikes on Kiev uh, every night. Mm. And after that, Russian troops are trying to attack the city. Now, uh, today, it was from north and the south. So then the units of the resistance are walking and patrolling the streets to be able to protect themselves and the ones that they like. And um, this is what we are doing as well, because we don't want to surrender, we wouldn't surrender, and we will uh, resist Russians for as long as it needed. How are you training to use your weapon, Kira? Uh, you know, the, the image has become so iconic. It's been shared so many times. It's being used by media all across the world. You've become the face of the Ukrainian resistance, the non-military resistance of Ukraine? Uh, so we are training right now with our unit. We have people who are experienced warriors during uh, their previous war with Russia. And so they are teaching us how to bear arms, how to uh, use it carefully and how to protect ourselves. Another... You know, another member of parliament, you know, th this is the power of an image, Kira, that your, your picture, your picture with the Kalashnikov has inspired citizens across the board, you know, to do the same. And they've all been doing it. They've all stepped forward. Lesia Vas uh, Vasilenko is another member of parliament who's been with us live. Lesia, I hear you've also, you've also decided to sign up and fight for your country to pick up a weapon. Yes, well, actually, all of our uh, us members of parliament were issued uh, weapons so that we can protect ourselves and our families. And now uh, this AK-47 is my best friend, along with the PM gun. And we have no other choice, really. Uh, if uh, Ukraine is to keep standing, if uh, our families and our close ones are to live, we have to protect ourselves. Mm. And uh, we had to learn it very fast in a matter of hours. Lesia and Kira, if I could request the both of you, because uh, you know, uh, in, when we cover this story, image, the pictures that people are seeing is everything. I want the both of you, if you possibly can, to hold up your weapon. I want you to put, put, hold up your weapon so people can see that you really mean what you're talking about. You've both got weapons, you've both been issued these weapons, and you're both actually carrying these weapons. Can you just hold them up for a moment? I want the camera to capture this. Two Ukrainian members of parliament, both with their firearms and assault weapons, here on India Today telling us that they are ready to fight. They've been issued these arms, they're being given training as well, and they say here on India Today that if it comes to it, they will defend their country. They're both politicians, both young members of parliament and politicians. Kira, these arms have been issued to you have all members of parliament been issued arms at this point of time? Uh, everybody who wanted 
uh, received their arms. Mm. They, so um, I, I don't think there was a person who would say no to that. Yeah. Because right now, all of us Ukrainians are standing shoulder to shoulder to protect what we love, to protect what we care for. We didn't want this war. We just wanted to move towards the European Union and have our own path as a country, mm. as a nation. Russia invaded us. They sent their soldiers to our soil and we will throw them back and we will protect what is ours. We will protect our children, our families, our cities and our country. I want to be very clear about one thing. I hope, I pray and I hope that you never need to use these weapons. I hope you know that it doesn't come to a situation where you need to use the weapons and that the military and the governments can sort out this issue. We don't want war. Lesia, what kind of what kind of training is being given to to you know to citizens like you? Uh, previously, we also reported about many citizens at the territorial defense uh, units who are signing up and trying to get weapons and training. Uh, how about members of parliament like yourself? What kind of training are you getting? Immediately when we were issued the gun, uh, the colleagues who were with us and had uh, military experience uh, gave us the basics. And then with each of our territorial defense units, we can come in and have our practice if we like. But again, uh, for territorial defense units at this point in time, it's... Uh, not that easy to get the ammo so uh all the bullets that we have mm -hmm. uh they, they are uh, at the price of gold right. so uh essentially uh we are saving those uh for the russians who might come and attack our houses how organized is this with civilians like yourselves politicians lining up to uh, you know pick up weapons to defend your country kira uh, uh how will you know when you are needed to go out if you need to fight uh, you know, is it in coordination with the military or is it individually? How does it work? So this is why I assembled a unit, a resistant unit of my fellow members of parliament and people who want to fight for their country. Mm. And uh, they have a leader and we are coordinating with the militaries here and we are doing our own patrolling the streets uh, to make sure that things are calm. So the strategy is that our army is taking on uh, strategic pieces, strategic parts of Russian army. But when there are smaller groups of Russians who sneak in, uh, especially when they are armed, then it's on the resistance uh, units to um, capture them. So does uh, Lesia, you know, the, the training that you were that you that 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 uh, people like you have been provided uh, as far as the usage of the weapon is one thing. But if this becomes a situation and, and once again, I want to say I hope it never becomes that situation where there is urban warfare. If you need to go out and actually fight on the streets, are you being trained in that kind of thing as well? There are lots of women in the Ukrainian military. The Ukrainian military, if I'm not mistaken, has the largest number of women compared to the size of the military in the world. So there is no shortage of women already with weapons fighting right now. But for people like you who are not in the military, are you being given training in, you know, urban warfare and the kind of thing that you might need to do if it comes to that? Okay, I think you don't understand the extent of the seriousness of the situation. We do, we do. Believe we, me, we've got we six are, reporters on the no, ground. No, but listen, no, no, listen to me. Like, we are a country in complete war. Yeah. There is no time for somebody to give you training and lessons and bring you out in the streets and mm. tell you, okay, look, this is what you do here, this is what you do there. Everybody is busy with their task, whatever they can do. And it's the responsibility of each one individually to mm -hmm. care first and foremost for their life. As for territorial defense units, what I want to say, and I want this to be very clear yes. and for the people of India to hear this as well. At this point in time, today, this morning, we opened an international territorial defense unit of Ukraine. Hmm. What this means, that if you want to fight for Ukraine, for Ukraine's right to existence, help us defend our lives and our families, you can come to the Ukrainian embassy in your country and sign up to the International Territorial Defense Unit and come here and stand shoulder to shoulder with Ukrainian men and women mm. like me, like my family, 
and help us get rid of the biggest aggressor in the world and help us stop aggression once and for all and have peace in the world finally. But we need your help and we need to, you to come and sign up along with us and fight for Ukraine and Ukraine's right to exist. Uh, uh, this this is this is a huge thing that you're you know you're revealing here uh, Alessia that an international territorial defense possibility uh, you know has been opened for people to actually go to their embassy so you, what you're saying is if in, in my country anybody wanted to come and fight in Ukraine you're saying we need to go to the Ukrainian embassy here in Delhi sign up and then someone from here can come to Ukraine and fight is that what you're saying Alessia and will be given weapons that's what there? I'm saying that's what I'm saying Kira, I, do you think do you think people from other countries will will do this? This is this is incredible. I mean, one has never heard of this kind of thing because you don't see NATO acting. You see countries sending you weapons, but nobody is actually sending boots on the ground. Uh, you know, which is perhaps what Ukraine needs right now. Do you think by opening up international territorial defense, do you think people will come in from other countries and join people like I receive, you? I receive. Uh, every day, tons of messages when people say, we will come and fight. That's why I'm uh, calling for uh, people from all over the world, come and help us fight Russians. Because we are working right now, yeah. not only as uh, Ukrainians that are protecting uh, Ukraine. We are a shield for the whole Europe. Yeah. We are pushing back Russia. And this is a David uh, versus Goliath situation hmm. where... Uh, if Ukraine fails, which country will be next? So we would not let Ukraine fail. And we will push Russia back. We will isolate it from the whole world. And it will be like a new North Korea. And this is why we need all the help and support. We need support from NATO uh, by closing our sky and creating no-fly zone. Yeah. We need support from from people through all over the world with uh, sending us money for to, to buy equipment and uh, first aid kits for our warriors. We need support of people who are coming here and bearing arms and protecting democracy democracy and European values. This is what we are fighting for, because the fight is not only within the Ukraine, mm. but it's much, much more global. Lesia, every day we're hearing more and more reports about the cities of Ukraine. Today we've gotten reports about Kharkiv and where there is a huge siege. There's a lot of fighting going on there. The Ukrainian military has been able to inflict quite a bit of damage on a Russian convoy. Can you tell us what's happening in Kyiv? Kyiv is the capital. It's the key center, uh, you know, of Ukrainian government and politics. There have been, uh, you know, reports over the last few days of Russian special forces and militias who've come in, but that the real Russian forces are around Kyiv right now. How near is the threat? Can you tell us, Lesia? Kyiv is still standing. We woke yeah. up this morning looked out of our windows or came up from our shelters in the subways and we saw that everything is fine we're still alive and kiev is still ukrainian and this is the main thing and kiev will keep standing no matter how many street fights are going on right now no matter how many uh shell fires and air strikes they send uh, our way kiev will st keep standing thanks to the resolve of the ukrainian people who are doing all they can and even more to make sure that the army, that the territorial defense units are uh, in good shape, in a good morale. Yes. And that uh, they keep keep fighting back with all they have. It is a difficult situation, nevertheless. Uh, people are uh, tired, but with it, people have enough anger in them yes. and emotion to keep going. And because we know what we are fighting for, because at the end of the day, truth is behind Ukrainians and we are fighting for our homes. We are fighting for our children yes. and our families and we are fighting a defensive war. It's a fight for the homeland. It's a fight for Europe, as Kira said. It's not just about Ukraine and the freedom of Ukraine. It's no exaggeration to say that this is about global peace and security. Uh, you know, Kira, uh, images of yourself, images of Lesia. Uh, are going out to millions of people right now. They've been seeing them all over the world, certainly everywhere here in India. The question I'd like to ask the both of you, to Kira first, is we've also seen many Ukrainians. And, you know, uh, I am far away in India, and there is so much interest 
in what's happening in your country right now. We're seeing, you know, many well-known Ukrainians, the world's number one heavyweight boxer, Vladimir Klitschko, and his brother Vitaly, who's the mayor in Kiev. We're seeing a former Miss Ukraine, Anastasia uh, Lena. All of them, you know, sign up to be part of this big war effort. So I take what Lesia said very, very, very clearly, that this is an all-or-nothing situation. Everyone wants to be part of this effort to defend Ukraine, Kira. Right. So I have not heard or seen somebody saying, we will not fight for our country. Yeah, amazing. I have, I have uh, only heard the asks for support, for unity, for shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder fights to protect what is ours, to protect what is dear to us, to protect what means the most right now. And you see, every evening we are talking to each other and saying, oh, the Kiev may fail tonight. And our international partners and very high-end partners are saying, we received intelligence that Russia will throw all their forces at Kiev. And every morning we wake up to the point where we say, well, look at us. We didn't fail. We didn't plan to fall. And we will stand up. Mm. We are standing up for the one of the most advanced armies in the world yeah. because we have this uh, urge to protect what is ours, to protect our soil, and to make sure that after this war, Russia will not ever remain the same and will not be able to threaten anybody. You know, I was talking about that uh, thing that I cannot forgive them is that our children right now, they know what the war is. Five days ago, they were just like normal children from any yeah. uh, part of the world. And right now they know the sirens, they know to get to the bomb shelter, they know to get down, they know their blood type, they know their, to, to wear the, um, the stripes for the light so they can be observed on the road. And this is so terrible, and this is something that neither myself nor any other Ukrainian women will ever forget. Has Putin, has President Putin of Russia, Alessia, has he underestimated, has he miscalculated the, you know, the determination of Ukrainians like yourselves to actually defend? Because it's been four days now of this invasion by this overpowerful army, much larger than yours, uh, the siege of Kiev is happening. It's, it's moving forward slowly. Do you think in your minds, as citizens, brave citizens of Ukraine, that maybe he's underestimated the commitment and strength of the citizens and military of Ukraine? Putin definitely underestimated. He didn't know what he would get himself into and what he would get his people, people into. I mean, he thought he would come into Ukraine and in two hours it would be done. No more Ukraine. He thought that he would come in here and people would be meeting him with embraces and praise. But he was wrong big time. Why? Because he is a psychotic leader of an aggressive state. He uh, only believes what he wants to believe. And with that, he is putting in danger uh, not just Ukraine and Ukrainians, but he is putting in danger Russians, he is putting in danger Europe and the whole world. I mean, the president of the Russian Federation is sending his people here to die. The military losses of the Russians have uh, go gone past uh, 3,000 uh, many hours ago. And their dead bodies are just being left here mm. in Ukraine. Nobody is picking them up even. This is how much Putin cares for his own population. What he is doing with this war in Ukraine is actually a, a genocide against Russian people. It is the Ukrainian government now which is caring for the widows and the mothers of the Russians who have died here by opening up a hotline where they can call and find out if their husband or son or brother or whatever is still alive, yes. if he is a hostage or if his body is here and uh, to figure out how to pick it up. Because that country, Russia, is doing nothing for its people. It's killing its own people and it's also killing Ukrainians with their crazed leader just obsessed with power and with rebuilding the big Russian empire. This is not right to live like this in the 21st century. I want to end this discussion uh, with what I started with, that I hope and I pray that uh, Lesia, you, Kira, the other people who are part of your 
you know, citizens, uh, citizens group, the organized, uh, you know, uh, military unit that you've set up. I hope you never need to pick up your weapon. I hope you never need to fire it. I wish your families and you stay completely safe. We do care about what happens in Ukraine, and I can tell you that we personally care because we've got the largest team of reporters on the ground, and that means that this is a story that speaks to us, it speaks to India, and it speaks to the world. And I promise you, we will not be moving out of there, and we will be telling the story. Thank you very much, Lesia, and thank, thank you very you. much, Kira, for being with us here on India Today.